Now she knows my secret. Our plans for the future have been wiped away, and we find ourselves back at square one. Here's what happened next. I want to travel. You want what? I want to travel. What, what does that even mean? I don't know. I, I want to go see stuff. You see, this, this is why I haven't even mentioned it up until now, because I never thought it was going to happen. Besides, we spent all our money on the time okay, now. Hang on, hang on. Before we rule anything out, I've already suggested us moving into a, a, a travel trailer, so that I don't have a problem with that. Besides, some of those RVs and fifth wheels are, I mean, they're as nice as a house. I mean, yeah, but, you know, the, the Jeep doesn't have a towing package. Neither of us really knows how to pull a trailer, and quite frankly, I don't think our marriage would survive either of us trying to back one up. And those big tour buses, yeah, they're great, they're nice, but I don't want to have to get a CDL to drive one. Look, Russ, just give me a second to process, okay? Just, you have literally just upended our entire everything. Our, our, our whole world has been reset back to square one. We, we don't even know what it is we're talking about. Let's quit playing with the film noir and go educate ourselves. Well, it's been about a year now since uh, I totally reset our lifetime plans by deciding I'd rather travel than build a tiny house. And since this is 2020, needless to say, a lot has happened since then. <laughs> Understatement. Uh, well, one thing that hasn't happened is that Ree did not get totally ballistically mad at me for sending us back to square one. She did get kind of mad at me for not telling her sooner, but... I would say frustrated, not mad. Well, whatever. Uh, but whatever happened, it, it actually made me think about what I meant by saying I'd rather travel. And as a result, we have done nothing but watch RV and van life videos ever since we discovered that that was a thing. And what have we learned? That our perfect RV doesn't exist. <laughs> I figured you'd say something like uh, what we want, somewhere between RV and van life. Well, how about uh, if I said something along the lines of well, you know, we managed to determine that uh, needing to combine my need to travel with our need to have a reliable roof over our head, we decided that we should focus our attention on finding a suitable <laughs> motorhome. <laughs> that's, that's a little formal, don't you think? <laughs> well, you, you won't let me say, I want to get a recreational vehicle, drive from state to state. <laughs> I swear, if you were ever serious about anything. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing I really am serious about, and that is we we don't need a towable. Oh, I totally agree. I also agree that there's no such thing as a perfect factory-built RV for us. Indeed. Say, what ever happened to that list we drew up? About, uh, uh, hang on, I have it here just a second ago. Here it is. Oh. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. How, how about if I, if I just read this to them yep. and, you know. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. What this is, is uh, we put our heads together and came up with a list of everything we could want and every concern we had about a motorhome and a recreational vehicle. And so we came up with the Miller's Perfect Recreational Vehicle. We want a home that feels both spacious and cozy. I must be able to stand up straight and walk from end to end. We agree we don't want issues associated with slide outs, but I do want to be able to stand in the middle of my home, hold my arms out straight, and spin around without touching anything. Ree wants to feel secure, but not like we're trapped in a box with only an emergency exit in case someone tries to break in. We both want to be able to open it up, let the breeze blow through, and we want windows that can be open while it's raining. Yes. 
I want to be able to park and enjoy. I don't want to have to do a bunch of setting up and breaking down. But at the same time, we want to be able to put down the leveling jacks, spread out a big awning, throw down some rugs, and spend a few days enjoying the scenery. On the inside, we agree that a rear kitchen is ideal, and since life is too short for bad food, we don't want to give up our favorite conveniences. I'm talking about things like our mini fridge and uh, you know the spices, oh, yeah. we'll talk more about that when we do the kitchen. <clears throat> Uh, in addition to the usual heating and air conditioning and on-demand heated water, we want the ability to do laundry. We want to power it all with a battery bank and a solar setup that will let us park in the shade. We want a walk-through shower for lots of elbow room. Other than that, the jury's still out on just what size water tank and what style of toilet we want. I'm leaning toward a cartridge, but we'll deal with that in another video. As for the main living space, I want to be able to take an afternoon siesta without having a bed take up valuable floor space. Speaking of the bed, it should allow either of us to get up in the middle of the night without waking the other. Really, our whole wish list here is, uh, is pretty basic. There are, there's a lot of RVs out there that will fill the bill. Oh yeah, yeah. I totally agree. That's all pretty basic. But the rest of that list is not. Uh, as far as the vehicle chassis, we're going to have to be able to work on it ourselves. Now, that means the engine, the drivetrain, etc. need to be uncomplicated enough that we can service and maintain it. Yes. We insist that we get the most eco-friendly vehicle possible. Of course. And we both agree that the parts uh, can't be too hard to find or too expensive. We agree that a molded fiberglass cab over is more aerodynamic and less prone to water damage. Over the cab water damage is really the most common problem problem that we've run across looking at, at used RVs. That's true. We, uh, we want the construction to be sturdy enough that if we are ever in a wreck, perish the thought, our house just might survive. I would like the RV to drive kind of like my old van Gypsy comfortably, not stressfully. Yeah. We never want to give a professional driver a reason to give us a nasty nickname if we can at all help it. And not just when we're on the road. We want to be able to get gas at almost any gas station without having to use the lanes that are designated for those people who make their living behind the wheel. We want to avoid the issue of finding somewhere to park, especially for overnight, when we are between point A and point B. Yeah, the more stressful it is, the less we're going to enjoy this adventure. <laughs> we'll end up killing each other, and no one will find the bodies. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if there's anything that you could think of that you could add to this list, we would appreciate you putting it in the comments below. Because that pretty well covers, I think, just about everything. Yeah. Oh, no, you don't. I see what you're doing there. You well, can ask for all the comments you want. That's not going to save you from reading the rest of that list. Come on. I want our RV to be less than 24 feet long because the average parking space is about 19 feet. Yeah, yeah. well, hey, I will almost guarantee you that someone is going to have a comment that they're going to agree with me that you need to explain how it is that you can say I had I have a problem with some of the small spaces we're talking about about having a 12 by 24 tiny house, but you're excited about getting an 8 by 24 motor home. In my mind, it's not the same thing. Oh, I, I know it is, but but it isn't. It's, it's the same space, but it's different expectations. Do you remember... Remember how you used to say, 
how you live in a space dictates the architecture. Something like that, yeah. Well, my expectations have changed here. I want to be living in this space in a different way. So basically what you're saying then is that the lifestyle change is what makes the difference. Yeah, that's a good way. That's a good way to put it. Uh, and I know on the surface it looks like a contradiction. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is. But there's a difference to me. Uh, I'm not going to be, when we're out on the road, I won't be living in that space the same way I would be if we were living here. Well, what are you going to do about the fact that we're going to still be here for at least another year or two years? Well, I've thought about that. Uh, and, you know, I actually figure that before we get out on the road, we're going to take some shorter excursions just to kind of get our, our RV sea legs. And we've already talked about the fact that we need to have utilities available here to plug into so that the motorhome doesn't have to be on its own power while we are at home base. Good point. Do we want to mention something about the avoiding debt? Yeah. What she's talking about is we want to do this entire project, if possible, without going into debt. This is going to be paid for out of pocket as we go along. Of course, having to save up has made us wait. And of course, making us wait has turned out to be, well, well. <laughs> well, it's, it's turned out to be a good thing because we think we've, we don't think, we know we found what we want. We are proud to announce that our new to us 1977 Class C motorhome has now been bought and paid for. We are simply waiting for it to be delivered to us here in Southeast Arkansas from Central Nebraska during a pandemic. <laughs> Is that it? You're not going to tell them anything else about it? <laughs> I, I don't think so. It's too much information to go into. We can do a big reveal in the next video. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, okay. yeah. And if you want to be part of that big reveal, then by all means, subscribe and click the notification bell. And uh, while you're at it, give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Be sure to leave your comments for us, too. Okay? We look forward to hearing from you and talking again soon. I'm Russ. Cherie's behind the camera. We will talk later. Here it comes.